Okay, guys, I'm gonna go over some basic solid concepts of the, of the bottom half guard and how I approach the game and things I'm concerned about. And uh, maybe you'll find something a little different that will help you out, okay? So when I'm playing the bottom game in half, one of my, I have a lot of concerns here. Now, I, I, I don't think half guard, like a half guard leg position should ever be fixed. I think that you can play a certain style, but you gotta constantly adjust it. Whether or not you're you're gonna play, you know, uh, like a Z position, or you're gonna drop it a little lower, or you're gonna kick it out and get an elevator, or whatever the case may be. You know, you, I think you gotta constantly adjust. And the reason for that is your opponent's always gonna set and make an adjustment to your adjustment. So you gotta protect yourself. So some of the things I'm concerned about is. I'm worried about him getting to my head. So I gotta control range. Now you gotta understand range here. If if I'm here, it looks like my head is right there and he can grab it. It's true. He's close to me, his chances of getting it are much higher. But to believe it or not, my range is back here. You see? So when you're fighting, let's say you're doing MMA or whatever, and a guy's punching you, he might try to punch you, he's gonna land. But you can actually now, he goes to throw a punch, you can move back. You can redirect it. You can do a lot of things because you're, you're messing with your range. If you're here, I'm, my range isn't much further than this, basically. Um, because I'm on a low shoulder, he doesn't, but he knows I'm down. He, I can't really, there's no threat of me getting up. It's everything right here uh, when I'm playing this position says, I'm staying here, you're on top, and I'm gonna play the position. That narrows my, my attacks that narrows my offense so when you're playing the bottom position here you got to also be careful that you're not you're not putting yourself in a position where you cannot scramble okay and i think you, that's very very important you got to be ready to scramble now some of the things that can backfire on you when you're scrambling one is you want to have your bottom leg in my opinion you got to have an option to get your bottom leg out if I choose to get up at all, I need to be able to get my bottom leg out. Without getting my bottom leg out, I can't get up. And the other thing about that is I want to make sure I'm protecting my bottom leg. So, okay, um, this outside crook of my knee here, I want to keep that nice and heavy down to the mat. And the reason for that is if I'm in this position and he grabs under this knee and he lifts it up, my hips come up, and now I can get blasted with passes, build passes and things like that. So I want to protect my bottom leg. I don't want him messing with that because he can shelf me, he can do a lot of other things. So when you're playing here, no matter how you're playing it, you be cautious of your bottom leg. You don't want him to control it. Now, one of the things that you might see is guys will bring their leg, at least I will, over the top and they'll come here, they're turning the corner. Now, some guys like this position, but me, if I'm on the bottom, this is the last thing I want. Cause now I'm becoming more and more committed to less and less options. I don't ever want this to happen personally. My uh, first thing I'm gonna do as I'm protecting myself and staying on the inside is to right away solve the problem, get my knee back out. Cause here, at least if I don't wanna be here, I can now take this out. I can start to use both legs or now I can start to work my get up and come out of the hole. There's a lot of options here. So, one of the priorities, make sure your bottom leg has free access and um, don't let him control and don't let him turn your hips to the sky. That will set up his pass in most cases. All right, so that's some little ideas on the bottom leg concept. The other thing now, if guys are fans of me, they'll hear me talk about this, but I think I mainly talked about it for the top is the battle, the big battle is here, in my opinion, the battle is here. I can play this position if he has an underhook on me, and I can play it if I have an underhook on him, okay? But I wanna make sure that I don't lose the fight on this arm. This whole thing can dictate everything. If he grabs my wrist and a pin, now I'm on stuck on a post, I can't move, I can't sit up. Now he's basically controlling me with a simple grip. So I always gotta remember, remember, if he grabs my wrist, I need to strip it. 
I need to make sure that I protect my hand. I don't want him grabbing it. I want to stay inside and try to keep him elevated. That way, if, if I feel the resistance of him trying to smash, now I can now redirect that or even set him up and give him what he wants, which will lead me to something else I want, okay? So, being inside, adjusting constantly, don't let him control your bottom arm. This is your post. Get rid of it, okay? Don't let him control it. Now, guys will grab the wrist here. Now, you can use this to your advantage because he's kind of, he's exposing his own arm and because he's using a downward grip, I'm actually able to come out of the hole and get on a post. So, you can play around and let a guy grab that and, and a downward grip and still attack. But in my opinion, why let him have anything? What if he pulls it up and he starts to turn my hips up? Like what, what if, what if, what if? So the thing about it is just get rid of it. Don't let anyone control his hand. There's nothing good that's gonna happen. So stay here, protect yourself, protect your head. And now you're going into some kind of defense mode. Now where he puts this arm will dictate what I do. As far as my attack, some guys will wrap through. That's popular. You know, you can use that to your advantage. Other guys are looking for the underhook. Other guys are playing away. You know, a lot of things like that. But when you're playing, especially like the Z guard, one of the things you gotta be really concerned with, and that's why I can't stress enough about protecting this arm, is the cradle pass. I'm a huge cradle guy, I've been doing it for forever. And uh, there's guys better than me out there, like especially the, you know, like the Godfather of Funk, you know, Wade Chalice or something. Their cradles are at a different level, okay? so. You gotta be very careful that uh, because of the cradle. The cradle is a very powerful grip. It works awesome for no geek grappling. Okay, it's just a wrestling move. So, by playing here, I'm protecting myself from the cradle. Okay, if you make a mistake sometimes, guys go here, they're, I'm exposing myself, you're gonna get cradle passed if a guy is timing you. So you gotta read your opponent, you gotta know your opponent, but protect yourself from the cradle. Don't expose yourself. You know, this is, this is not necessarily going to be a battle where we're trying to do something technically back and forth. He might just try to athletically run me down. And a cradle is a great way to do that. So you got to make sure that you're protecting yourself. The other thing, especially if you're a tall guy, be very careful overstretching yourself. Okay? And the reason why I say this is because when you're, me being a tall guy, big guy, we have pockets. Little guys have little pockets. And I say pockets meaning corners. Like, um, I need to make sure I protect my corner unless I'm trying to set them up. A lot of guys will play really open like this, and the more they get stretched, the more that abdominal wall gets stretched, the more their spine gets stretched, and now they gotta work harder, and their, their legs are starting to get too far away from their body, and it becomes these big pockets. Now, you're not in a good position because you're not really balled up anymore. You can't really get under him. You can't roll very well. You're basically, if you're gonna be here, you gotta start figuring out exactly where you're gonna go. When in doubt, you know, try to protect yourself. Play the game, work the style, just be smart. If you feel like he's head hunting and you can't handle it, work the head control, just protect yourself, okay? So that's some of the concepts so far on that. Now, when you're, when you're in this position, now you understand a little bit how to protect yourself, where to, you can start messing around with your feet, not committed over committing to a position the other option now is to start messing with him like i said when i was talking about range right now he knows where i'm at but if he tried to grab me and i didn't like it i could move away and come back and i could start to grapple but now if i get on a post now you can see where my post is right now this post right here can backfire on you and it's only because of the position of my hand he can see he's already looking for it I can use this, if I have a cross grip here, I'm gonna be okay. But the other problem is that if he tries to pressure me forward, he's gonna attack me toward my low shoulder. I don't want that, I'm not offensive there. So now, if I'm here, I'm gonna move my hand. So now if he tries to push into me, I have a post. If I need to get away, I can go one, I push, pull myself out, and get out, okay? Let's get back a little. So when you're here, he, I might be here, I want to try to keep my hand away and have some base. And I'm in this position, 
if I if I'm if he tries to throw a punch or whatever the case is, my range is back here. So if I have to move, it's a simple, and then I can come back or switch to a pummel or whatever the case is. So if you're here, try to protect your hand. Don't don't leave it so close. Here, you can play, but it just depends how he's playing you. He can run you down. Get ready. Because no matter what happens, here, I can pull myself away. Now, even better, especially for you big guys. Big guys, learn to get to your hand, okay? Smaller guys can pop to their hand much better. And when they're down here, they tend to be much more fast. Big guys, when you're here, you tend to be really heavy on your post. And when you're heavy on your post, that means it's harder to move. And that means if you're going with another big guy, now you gotta carry his weight, you know? So a lot of people think weight is relative. It's not a 155 guy going with another 155 guy. The reason why that match looks different than two heavyweights going, because it is different, all right? Learning to understand your body type and how to deal with the weight. There's always the exceptions where you'll see a big guy that maybe was trained well by small guys have a small style, but it's, uh, it's rare. Okay, and in my experience, if I'm at my hand and my hips are starting to get under my head, it's very easy for me to get up. Very easy for me to scramble. I can move, and once again, if I need to retract my range, now I can drop my range, I can move back my range, I can ball up, I can do lots of things, okay? So, one of the other options is to get to your hand, okay? And this, I'll add this with, you know, head control, underhook, overhook, whatever the case is. But I'm trying to talk about the concepts. If you're really concerned about passing, you're worried about a lot of things, always be in a position to get up. It's one of the best situations you can do for yourself. Okay? Now, the other thing is be careful exposing yourself to the half guard. Just reaching in for no reason can get you backfired. All right? Because I see a lot of guys, they're so committed to the deep half, or they're so committed. I can, I can beat most of these Saints um, with good head position. And if I can do it, other people can do it. So you gotta be careful. Like if you're gonna dive in for a half guard sweep, you wanna make sure that it's explosive, that you're getting his weight up and over, and you're getting under him. That's a very, that's, you follow your technique. Don't just reach in to reach in. It's a bad habit, especially you guys that are, maybe coaches or, you know, you're a higher level student and you're going with students a lot, you know, not as good as you, that's a, that's a poison. That's a poison because you're going to get away with crap technique because they're not at the skill of you and you can get away with just reaching in and toying around. And what happens, you just start practicing worse, worse technique. Then you go against a guy, your level, or maybe he's just a good athlete or Maybe he's a little better than you, and you just get sent, you just get destroyed because you gave him so many opportunities because you have a habit of just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna come in here and reach. Like, no, you got make sure you're always protecting yourself. Make sure your sweeps are, are explosive. Keep everything realistic. I mean, if you're a professional, 100%, but if you're not, still, you want to compare yourself with professionals. So, you know, take yourself like a professional, train like a professional, look at things like a professional. Because that speed and, and the aggression and, and the timing of that is all part of technique. It's all part of this game of trying to neutralize athleticism without a gi. Okay? That's all part of it. All right? So when you're here, pay attention to your range. Where's my head? What is he looking for? Okay? Pay attention to my bottom leg. Make sure I can get out there. Protect my, my bottom post. Okay? I, I can move my range. I can get up. Get to my hand. I can stay on a low um, elbow, and I can fight either side. And I'm always trying to switch. I'm trying to play pull lock. I'm moving my knee. I'm always digging around. I'm staying active. Sometimes I'll even switch my hook here. I'm always playing around to stay active because without that, eventually a plan will be put in place, and he will start to instigate, uh, start to attack. And when he starts to do that, now you're playing reactive. The only problem with that game is he has one luxury you do not. He can just get up and leave. And that's something that is taken for granted. And it hurts a lot of grapplers when they transfer to MMA because in MMA, there is no pressure. 
by the referee for him to stay on top. If he decides to get up and leave, the ref will look at you, well, you gotta stand up. And it starts to become this weird game where none of your technique is working and it becomes very frustrating for a lot of jiu-jitsu guys. And the reason for that is, in a grappling match, that's, you know, you'll, there's pressure on him to pass. So I can stay here and he's got to attack, he's got to come forth. In other words, you can get stalling points called on him. Okay, you can see that, man. So that concept right there is very, very important to understand because if you had just adjusted your style, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today, is um, adjusting your style to, to come forward, to attack, to focus on get ups and snap downs or what I call snap guard, that kind of stuff, that will work in grappling game. And then if you go to do MMA, it will work in MMA. And to me, that, that style, which I'll get in more to in this DVD, is the future, or I would even say the now. I really hope more people get into it. And it's just a blend of wrestling, funk wrestling, and jujitsu. Um, calling it American Jiu Jitsu, Jake Shield started that name as far as I know, and I love it, American Jiu Jitsu, I, I love that, okay? Because that to me is the new catch wrestling, it's a new hybrid of all of us pouring our techniques together and trying to understand and master this no gi game and make it something better than it is, okay? So that's kind of some of the concepts. I'll get more into it about certain wrist grips and where I'm going once we start getting closer to the techniques. But I wanted to get you guys a basic understanding, okay, of where I'm looking for my legs, how I'm trying to approach it, well, how I'm trying to protect myself, and things like that, okay? So that's a good overview on some of the approaches, the, the, the tactical approach and my mentality at this position.